This project first appeared in Node Volume 1, our independent zine. Check it out by clicking the zine link at the top of the Node site. Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well. Today I have the long awaited update to the Node mini server with version number 2. In case you've never seen it before, the aim of the Node mini server project is to create a cheap, easy to make hardware node which allows us to start building out the physical infrastructure for the decentralized web. Here we begin to replace remote servers with nodes that the users themselves own and operate. The design consists of two PCBs sandwiched between a 3D printed frame. This makes for a surprisingly sturdy and easy to assemble device. Inside is a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus with future options for upgrading to the more powerful Asus Tinkerboard or other SPCs. This choice allows you to run various node applications at the same time depending on your needs. Bitcoin, Lightning and Ethereum nodes, payment servers, IPFS and DAT servers, VPNs, VPSs and other self-hosting servers are all ideal for this platform. The internal 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD that's attached to the device should provide more than enough storage space. It's pretty minimalist with just screws and air holes drilled into the top case PCB. The underside reveals the bottom of the adapter PCB and besides looking cool this was done to further reduce the size of the device. There are no other defining features other than the rear which has some more air vents as well as the ethernet, power, USB and micro SD card ports. You could easily put something similar together without modifying an SBC, but it will be a maze of wires and much bigger. This device measures in at 152 by 88 by 25 millimeters and can basically be plug and play. Another cool thing about the open design is that you could use custom colors for both the PCBs and 3D printed frame to customize the design to your taste. Since the server is most likely going to be running often, if not 24-7, I wanted to do a few things to keep the temperature down. Firstly, the top PCB used on the case is aluminium based, meaning under normal loads it stays fairly cool and acts as a heat sink. The micro SD card on the Pi has also been moved off the board itself and away from the heat, hopefully mitigating any of the temperature related problems they can sometimes suffer from. There's also a temperature control blower fan you can set up in Raspbian, which automatically turns on when the Pi's CPU temperature reaches a certain level, turning off again when it's cooled down. The circuit design is the same one used in a guide by Hackernoon, so follow that to set it up. Also I found a better script than the one they use, so check that out as well. Links to these are on the node site. And if you're going to be hammering the server 24-7 with heavy loads, you could optionally wire the fan directly to the 5 volt and ground GPIO pin so it runs continuously. Again, there's lots of flexibility here so you can set it up how you like. As always, all the source files for this project, including the PCB and 3D print files, are located on the node site. If you're watching this on YouTube, the link is in the description. Here are the parts used. A 3D printed case including struts. A 3D printed hard drive or SSD frame. The bottom adapter PCB. The top PCB. The micro SD card PCB. The SATA adapter PCB. 8 M2.5 times 10 mm screws. 6 M2.5 times 8 mm screws. 6 M2.5 hex nuts. 4 M3 by 6 mm screws. The Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, the 100mm 4-pin FPC cable, two 4-pin FPC connectors, a 2.5-inch hard drive or SSD with a 7mm form factor, a USB-A 2.0 female port, a standard micro SD card socket, a 5.5 by 2.1mm right-angle DC jack, a surface mount RJ45 jack, an S8050 transistor, a 30x10x10mm 5V blower fan, the W25P1 USB SATA adapter, and finally some self-adhesive rubber feet. The internals comprise of two adapter boards which connect the Pi to the 2.5 inch hard disk. Basically all of the modifications require something to desolder components. I used an electric vacuum pump which makes life extremely easy, but if you only have a spring loaded desolder pump, desolder wick and some patience, that will work too. The first thing we need to do is remove the front three ports, i.e. the ethernet and the two USB ones, along with all the GPIO pins. 
Plug in the micro SD card adapter, then screw the Pi into the adapter board, making sure the holes on the Pi and the adapter line up. Then solder the micro SD PCB as well as the rest of the GPIO, USB and Ethernet holes to the PCB below. The easiest and nicest looking method I found that works involved using the legs of resistors or thin single solid core wire to bridge the gap. You simply push the leg through the hole and bend it so it doesn't move. You then flip the board over, snip the excess off with flush cutters and solder it in place. Now flip it back over to the other side, snip that side and then solder that in place. You then need to remove the USB port from the SATA adapter and do the same procedure, replacing it with a small PCB. You then solder the flex connector to the SATA adapter. This lets us connect the two halves together with a little flex cable. Now solder on the remaining ports, the transistor, the FPC connector and the fan to the main board. I added a little symbol to show which way round to place the transistor and it's worth mentioning this is when you'd solder the fan directly to the 5 volt and ground GPIO pins if you want it to run constantly. Screw the 3D printed brackets under the hard drive or SSD you're using with the M3 screws, insert the modified SATA adapter and then connect the flex cable. Screw the case halves to the bottom PCB then push in the 3D printed struts which stop the case moving about. If you have an M25 thread tap that will make screwing everything together way easier but you can do it with a bit of elbow grease. Now connect the other side of the flex cable to the main board Place the hard drive into the case and screw the top PCB on, securing everything in place. Finally, flip the device over and add the self-adhesive rubber feet. I found some cool square ones that I cut diagonally, but you can use any type you want. Now all you need to do is set up your operating system and power everything on. You'll need a barrel jack 5 volt power supply with at least 2.5 amp output. When I tried on the previous model with regular micro USB power supplies, sometimes they didn't have enough juice to keep it running consistently. That being said, you could still use an inexpensive USB to 5.5 by 2.1mm barrel jack cable if you had a powerful enough USB power supply. So that is the new Node Mini Server, hope it was worth the wait. Like I said earlier, I think this design or something like it could become a standard for DIY mini home servers in the future and perhaps some of you start building or selling these so we can get them out there and start testing, developing and improving the features. I was thinking of opening a limited pre-order on this depending on what the response was like and I could get a load of these made up for testing and experimenting. If you do start making them yourself, be sure to let me know. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.